Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing well. I've got a 30 minute session I'm doing for a client. Gonna be sharing distance, psychic wisdom, and energy healing. The goals here, helping them to connect with their spirit guides. There's a little bit of a background story. Having opened up before, wasn't a good experience, disconnected. Now trying to open up again without the fear and the memory there. So I'm excited to help you out here. Thank you so much for requesting the session, sharing these goals. This is gonna be really interesting. I think we should explore meeting your spirit guides too. <laughs> Who are these people? How can I connect with them? How do I overcome what happened? <laughs> Whatever wants to come forward about it. Thank you so much. Really nice to meet you. Excited to see what we've got here. Thank you for sharing with us here on YouTube. Okay, I'm gonna read your goals out loud and then I'm gonna get started. You say, I would like to open up to my guides, but I'm uncertain. I had an experience where I was communicating with who I thought were guides. They seemed to be helpful until they started messing with me. I disconnected and haven't had issues since, but now that I'm interested in opening up to my guides, I want to connect with my true guides and not some manipulative influence. How do I trust and how do I know for sure that who I communicate with next is a genuine spirit guide? Okay. <clears throat> so you're ready to open up to your guides and how do you trust that who you're connecting with is truly them? So. It's not just about, it's like reconciling this event completely and knowing how to sort of bridge the gap and actually connect with genuine guides. But then how do you know they are genuine guides? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to relax and we're going to tune in. We're going to make sense of this whole thing. Okay. So by the end of this session, dang it, you're going to be feeling a lot better. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay. Okay. The first thing that I see is like this. You're kind of um, a hardened structure and you're bent forward. Like your nose is touching your knees in a way. It's like you're bent perfectly flat against your legs. And you're stuck in this way, like a solid rock. You're also in a space that <clears throat> there's lots of fire and kind of underground, uncomfortable, purgatory, hellish kind of environment, okay? This is the first thing I'm shown. So part of why you're literally closed, I, I think of a pocket knife, okay? Like when it's closed, it's like tucked into its little space. But then when it's opened here, the whole thing is exposed, right? It's now a useful tool. But then when it's closed, it's like conveniently tucked away. You're closed, which means you're not in a useful stance. You're not in a useful state. It's kind of a weird thing to parallel you with a pocket knife. But that's what you remind me of, okay? You're closed, you're tucked in. It makes me think of an ostrich with the head in the sand because it's safer that way. Okay, <clears throat> you need an edge, okay? You need to, to get an edge here. So you need to open up like the pocket knife. You need to open up and you need to be useful, but you're useful when you have an edge. So there's something here about kind of head in the sand because of fear, right? Makes sense. But you're tucked away and you're just kind of closed off. Like, you, you I, I mean, that's really bent. <laughs> that's like incredible stretch going on there and holding it. But it's avoidance. It's like when you're completely opened up, you're exposed. You know what else this reminds me of? Okay, so if you are going through a devastatingly hard time, maybe you're struggling with depression, for example. Um, you will find yourself curled up in a ball, like in the fetal position. So when you do that, you're, you're completely hugging yourself and you're protecting all of your chakras, um, it, it, which is actually closing you off from what you need to be doing, which is opening up. So at times in my life, if I was struggling with depression and I was getting into a really 
desperately difficult state with it, I would find myself like curled up in a ball. And I remember Archangel Michael saying, Abby, o open up. Can you open up? And so I would try to open myself up completely open and straight. And it was such a weird sensation. Like, why do I need to tuck myself into myself? Like, why do I need to hold myself so tightly? Why does it feel wrong to open up my body and expose all my chakras? And so there's something about when we're in a vulnerable state, we close off, we literally curl into a ball or like in this case, we, we bend in an incredible way and hold it there, like putting the little pocket knife back into its little container. Um, but you've got to literally open up and be completely exposed because that's going to empower your situation. It's not going to... Um, make things worse, okay? <laughs> Doing this might feel safe, but it's the opposite. I keep thinking of you as a pocket knife. Like, you've got to, you've got to be a little bit more threatening. And it, I know it's strange. We're talking about the energy world. Do you really need to have a knife in the energy world? No. Do you really need to be threatening in the energy world? No. Um, but something to counteract the way your energy is behaving, you're like really closing yourself off. And you need to get tougher than that. You need to be a little more aggressive, like MMA fighter or something. Like you've got to open up and be more aggressive. And it's not because you have to be. It's just to shift your energy. Like it's to pop you out of that, that state. Like the ostrich needs to get its head out of the sand and start freaking facing its fear. You know what I mean? So it's something a little bit more edgy, a little bit more dangerous. Um, it's going to be an energy medicine here that's going to give you a strength, okay? Okay, my guides are asking, why are you in, like, why am I finding you in this sort of, like, hell space? Okay. <clears throat> I don't know. Let me, let me explore here. Why are you putting yourself into a vulnerable place? So, all right, so we, we are exploring the answer. What attracted those people? entities what attracted that experience in the first place there's something vibrationally you're working with fear so if you're working with fear you're going to attract a fearful experience but if you're working with confidence you can also attract a fearful experience so either way it's your life path now why are you in this space let me i'm i'm looking for the answer right now okay i don't know what the answer is yet I just go to you and I give you a big hug and it's kind of weird because you're still folded. <laughs> it's not for me to take you out of this energy space, but it is for me to show you that love is here. No matter what situation you're in, love is always here. And no amount of entities can um, override that truth. So you're always going to have to know the truth. So we're going to go through hard times in life, whether it's human world stuff or it's spirit realm exchanges, like opening up psychic ability, talking to spirits and stuff like that. We're going to go through challenges. But love is always with us no matter what we're going through. So I represent a spirit guide right now that has a kind hand and sort of kind hugging arms. And it's not asking you to just stop folding yourself or is this, it's like it's up to you to decide when you're ready um obviously through this request here you're deciding that you're ready to open up but there's resistance in the process and there's a need for a little bit more safety and security okay <clears throat> Uh, the scene is changing. I'm seeing something new. It's confusing, okay? It's it's like um, you represent a female lying down on... It's kind of... I mean, the space is made out of, like, blood and fire and rock and dry and hot and gross. You know, it's like hell space, okay? And you're lying down just... And then there's a man that's kind of... Um, there's, a, there's a sexual exchange, but it's not... 
it's like presented as an idea, but it's not actually in that, that experience. It's just presented as an idea right now. And you have to ask yourself what, what you want and what do you not want? And something is half asleep here because you're, you're just sort of laying there and whatever happens, happens. But you're not stopping to say, well, wait a second, something is happening, I don't dig this. And so, no. So there has to be a moment of like being really conscientious about the energy around you and the exchanges that you want to have. Um, you, you've already identified that you were able to notice something was messing with you, right? So you were cutting that yourself off from that, which is good. So you are able to discern, you know? But this is being revealed here. And you're half asleep. And again, I see the knife has to open up. You've got to get like a little bit more tough, a little bit more of a sharper edge where you're edgier. It's like, why are you here? Who are you? What do you want from me? Do I want this with you? I don't think so. Or maybe you do. Who knows? You know what I mean? So you've got to decide what it is that you want. Just because this space is a hell space, I mean, like you can go anywhere you want in infinite universe. So sometimes our energy has us in different energy space. So, so, okay. People don't realize this, but we're pulling information from everywhere and our souls are like, our soul is more than just one energy that's stuck in this body. So right now I'm awake doing this session for you and my soul is boo, 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 all over the place bringing information back to me. I can have thousands of parts of myself, millions of parts of myself going places. And so if I'm in like, let's say a low energetic space, I might be pulling my energy into a, an interdimensional space that's kind of a hell landscape because I just feel like death today. You know, be, did I feel it or am I actually existing in an interdimensional space that is paralleling my vibrational state? And so we're interdimensional travelers, even as we're living a day to day human life. I know it's crazy stuff. OK, but the stuff you're going to figure out the more that you work with energy and have exchanges with the universe. So. OK, how do. OK, so why are you in this hell space? I still don't know how to articulate an answer to that yet. Um, now, this new scene, you're kind of half asleep. There's a, this energy here that's kind of going to rape you, basically. But it's up to you. It, it's like there's this delay, almost like waiting for you to say yes or no to this. But you're ignoring it and you're half asleep about it. But you have to wake up and you have to be clear. And that saying no is so solid and useful. And it does work, okay? Obviously, you've proven this to yourself. You've proven that you can disconnect. You've proven that you can say no. Okay, there's a, there's a difference here between if you ultimately disconnect. And so you've disconnected completely from every single connection you could possibly make. Just because you had one bad experience, now you disconnect from every single thing. Verse, you have this experience and then you say no, but you still remain open. So this is about awakening to the power that you have to actually say no and stay open. And to be self-aware as to the types of energies and uh, that you're wanting to work with. Are you closed off? Are you opened up? Um, are you edgy in a dangerous way or are you just edgy? Because you're honest, you're clear cut and honest, you know what I mean? There's a strength to that. Hmm. So this scene continues a little bit, okay? And you're asleep and this man now is raping you in this hell space. And you going to sleep was somehow an answer. And the answer was, yes, you can take advantage of me. And your soul is sad and you leave even this aspect of yourself and become an even lighter body and you cry and you just like a ghost, like float away somewhere and you just cry against a blood wall. <laughs> and you feel like you, you don't have power or control like, you can't say no because 
no when no comes out of you it's not powerful and nobody will believe you or you can't so something um needs to be reflected on here about the power that you have and that your words are crisp and clear they're they have an edge to them and they're respected so if you don't if you believe you could say no but it's not going to be respected then that's that's where there's an issue okay so whether it's in the human world or the spirit realm no is so freaking powerful and let's say the human world's challenge you that maybe people don't hear you people don't take you seriously like the human world can be strange and how it communicates to us our worth and value and then we believe it and then we behave a certain way in the energy world it's helpful actually to have exchanges with the energy world because it teaches you that the energy world requires honesty and brutal honesty human world is terrified of brutal honesty spirit realm like if you're not honest you're manipulative and so genuine spirit exchanges are always perfectly honest 100 percent. so if i have a, a being that's talking to me i'll notice that why are you not telling me like i can feel something about you that's off can you help me understand it like so there's like totally open honest direct conversation and so there's something here about your no is worth respecting and is respected because the energy world has to respect your no so your no means i don't want anything to do with this exchange it, it's not like um so it's all about communication you know what i mean so is this, this spirit or this male energy or whatever taking advantage of you or is this male spirit actually honoring the honest exchange it's i know it's going to sound kind of strange it's all going to sound manipulative and weird and wishy-washy and wonky but the truth is everything it, it honors honest exchange and so in this scene you are offering an honest exchange which is avoidance falling asleep and the exchange then somehow can computes to yes and now you're crying in a corner struggling with this reality but all it's teaching you is that you have every right to say no and that it will be honored in the spirit realm in the human world I i'm tied up in a chair stop don't hurt me untie me human being says no and it's like i'm telling you what to do you need to honor it in the spirit realm it's different you're so ridiculously powerful every single person is ridiculously powerful in the spirit realm because it's all about authenticity and honest exchange. So, <laughs> okay, let's let's let me go to this crying part of you here. You need to hear all of this because this is going to empower you in your goal, okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's some, definitely some work to do here. I I guess my thought was that i'm here for you you know so when i go to your crying self i'm like i'm present i'm here for you and the crying self heard me talk about the edge and the knife and so you actually have a knife and you like swing it at me and so it gets me thinking about how you're translating information and this inner part of you okay and i say does the knife represent no and I ask, um, you know, this part of you, I, I say, are you able to say no, whether you want to swing the knife at that male spirit, or are you wanting to swing the knife and say no at someone who's actually trying to help you in the spirit realm? Like, like let's try to get a clear understanding here, a clear picture. So it's, it's just, all it is is communication it's not offensive okay all it is 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 literally a neutral communication even i hate you is a neutral communication <laughs> it might have emotion and, and energy to it it's like wow you really hate me okay well thanks for telling me um why <laughs> it's literally nobody's offended here and if they are offended that's their insecurity so it's all about strengthening communication in the spirit realm okay so you're, you're quieting down and you're looking at the knife and something is kind of distorted about your appearance. You look kind of, um, 
like a maggot, okay? It's kind of a harsh um, description, but you do. You look like a maggot and you're in a lot of pain and you don't know how to communicate or you don't know how to get your words right, but you don't know how to trust. And th that's telling me, my gosh, this is really a sensitive issue. That's probably why this had to happen because your guides are actually trying to strengthen you. So to become stronger, you have to go through your weaknesses that sucks, but that's how it works, okay? So, and I take the knife and I turn it into light. And I say it's, it's simply communication. And I place the light into your heart. And I, I say it's, it's up to you to decide what it means to you, but I'm happy to to help you understand. And I keep feeling like I am taking the role now of the guide that's trying to reach you, which is a female energy. And she's very not gonna cross any lines, okay? She, like on purpose, she is, um, I, I feel more like, okay, spirit guides don't feel concern. So soulmates do though. Spirit guides are completely at such a high vibration, they understand the inner workings. So that tells me there's a soulmate who deeply loves you and is concerned about your energetic well-being, is actually trying to reach you with love, but there's some sensitivity. So your spirit guides are the love of all, okay? They're part of your higher self, they're part of God, they're part of the love of all. But they also have wisdom to share, not just logical exchange, deep, deep, deep heart um, heart moving wisdom. Okay. So now that I'm understanding this, so the soulmate is, um, uh, just like a white animated body. And I feel that this soulmate is, um, still working through some of their own, um, understandings about Something is also not strong in them either, okay? But there's uh, genuine love and care for you. That's what matters most here. So you're already echoing to me. So you're telling me that someone that loves and cares about me is trying to get through to me, but they're also not like strong in their own light. <laughs> yeah, that, that actually is true. While you're struggling with communication in a hell space, and you're trying to navigate what the meaning of that is with that other male spirit energy and what the meaning of the knife is and how to communicate. So there's a lot going on here in your energy world. I mean, this is fascinating stuff, you know? You say, how will I reach my spirit guides? Oh, <laughs> wait a second. Did you just communicate? <laughs> did you just get edgy there? Okay. <clears throat> I like that you did that because Somehow this, this soulmate then has reached you, which means they have guided you to awaken to a realization of what you want and what you don't want. And that's what it's all about. So that male energy was also guiding you. And so the hell space is also guiding you. And I'm also guiding you. Every single person is guiding you. Human, dream people, animals, <laughs> everything, you know, everything is guiding you. Even the stuff you don't want, like those other guides that were, were messing with you or whatever. <laughs> Guiding you, okay? <laughs> so, you're, something is changing and you're pulling all this information inside yourself like a vacuum. And you just popped out like you were turned inside out and now you're right side out. And you're like a levitating badass, basically. But... Um, you don't emanate any light, which is strange, um, but you're levitating and I, I can feel there's a vibrational intensity to you, but you don't emanate light and you're in a dark place. And so that's kind of strange to me because I would expect you to emanate light. I'm just going to explore this some more. Okay. Okay. You, there, you had a wound pop open. And that wound that popped open created a lot of confusion with, with communication and exchange and it made you sad. And then um, it made it so you don't really understand how to even let the soulmates help you from the spirit realm where they're still working on stuff. We're all still working on stuff, okay? So, but somehow this communication, you're hearing me and something clicked. 
So in that click, you just literally sucked it all in, almost like the wound was everywhere and you were just living in the wound of the situation. Suddenly all reversed. And now, bam, you're you. You're actually your you self. But this is also not quite, like, this is so much better. But what what is off about it is your, okay. Well, I mean, sure, like, basically you're, you have an attraction to understanding the dark side of the universe. It, that's here, okay? So um, maybe you have a spiritual gift for um, doing soul retrieval. Like maybe you actually have a gift for going into dark places and going into hell spaces and you have a gift for communication, but you're denying yourself that. Um, so, so seeing you not emanating light, like, I mean, I, I love the energy you're expressing. So that works for me, but it usually you, when your heart is active, you're, you glow without trying, it just happens. So what, what is going on? But because you're dark, you're, you're emanating your strength though. You're, you're dark and you're in a dark place. There seems to be like a, a being that you're communicate with, communicating with this and be, this being is dark, okay? This being is like the hell space communicating with you. So now I'm wondering, what are you seeking? Um, maybe those guides that were messing with you, um, maybe you're just not understanding, you're not translating why you are communicating with them or why you're attracting them. Because your spirit guides are guiding you to know who these guides are that were messing with you. So they're, they're like the umbrella above everything that happens in your life and they're supporting you through these processes, you know? You're, again, you're really influenced by really dark language. And that means that your soul has experience with dark, darker languages, like soul exchanges. This is really dark. Basically, it's talking about, um, it's like putrid, dark, sacrificial kind of blood ritual stuff that pulls out the fear and the chaos within. It's just, it's just garbage. I mean, it's like blah, 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 talking about dark stuff. You know, it's like, mm, great. Like, it gets boring after a while, you know, it's, it's not that. It's, it's just like, you know, there's so much more interesting things out there. You're under a spell. You're so, sort of still asleep. You're awake and asleep. So I touch you and I'm again that's representing that soulmate. And so I'm just going to be eyes watching because a soulmate is kind of just like a white liquidy light. And she stands in front of where you're um, levitating as this like badass energy. But this, this like you're just receiving like a hypnotic exchange with some dark influence. And uh, so she stands in front and she touches your heart and says, please, no, we're not there yet. But this time you don't reject her. You actually embrace her and say, I trust you. And she says, you don't have to trust me. You just have to know where the love is guiding you. So wake up. Is this where you want to be with the, the exchange of love or is this not it? wake up what is the exchange of love sound like and this is just communication we don't have to take offense to it okay it's just communication is this a communication you want to have maybe it's interesting maybe you want to learn something from this it's just communication okay but if it doesn't feel right at this time then keep seeking keep searching you're in a cosmic library full of books which is like people souls places adventures to be had you know that's life. So the soulmate is, is um, really, okay, okay, I'm going to tell you another thing. The more I learn about the soulmate, the more I love, I really like the soulmate. 
so again, female energy, but I see that um, she's, she's actually, her higher um, expression is sending a, a dense part of herself down to reach you. So when she comes down to reach you, as a density, she loses a, she, it's almost like she's not perfectly aware herself, and that's why it seems like something off, like she still has work to do. Um, but she's really under, honoring the compass of her own heart, which is incredible. And she's kind of like determined and she's really focused on the same circulation of thought. Like, I'm here for you. Is this what you want for yourself? Wake up. I see that you're sleeping. Um, and so she's really relentless. But what she's doing is trying to get you to come up and out of like a spiral of a lower vibration to come up and out. So when you pop out, you're actually emanating life and your intense energy and you're fully awake in it and through your human self, right? And then you can meet her eye to eye, which that, that tells me like, wow, you, you could really go places here, okay? So you're on the cusp of, of awakening, that, but understand that communication is just communication. Know yourself, right? Be edgy because yes and no are strong things to say. And to know yourself means then you can know yes or no really clearly and you can express that. But you can also talk to whoever you want to talk to. And so if you want to talk to some dark demonic thing about blood stuff, it's like, why am I here? Am I here to heal you? Am I here to just be myself? Do I want to be in this exchange? Go somewhere else. It's not like you have to close off and shut everything out. You just say, is this for me? Yes, no. Don't dig it going somewhere else. Well, I'm here for a reason. What that might that reason be? So you stay or you go, you know, you just, you just flow, you know? And so I see that this soulmate was watery, white, sort of glowing. It's not glowing very bright, but it's like a white liquidy light, okay? And it's still touching your heart helping you to slowly wake up and there's something kind of sticky around your third eye and your eyes, your human eyes. And so that's also part of self-destructive behavior. So there's like an, an you know, we have light and dark sides, but those those can be powerful wise sides. But if you have a broken side, whether it's from the light or dark, a broken side is pretty nasty. And so if you have a broken side of yourself tormenting yourself, not, not a great situation to have. They're pretty, um, it's kind of like a lifetime learning thing. But there's an aspect of you trying to get keep you closed. Could be your ego, you know, in a projected self like this. Um, but I see like a stickiness around the third eye and the human eyes, like wanting you to stay asleep. And then convincing you that you are asleep, you'll always be asleep or stay asleep. You have every reason to be afraid, which tells me it's ego communicating. And so your ego is getting in the way of awakening and working with spiritual communication. So that's all I can share. You're on a journey here, okay? And you're being supported and there's wisdom here helping you and the love is with you through this whole thing. You're you're actually traversing some some darker planes. So even if you are choosing to think happy thoughts, you may have um, like an energetic attraction to tr like transforming certain heavier energies on your soul path. And it just kind of draws you into those heavier places. But I think that there's there's something of a, a discovery here about, you could say, a secret gift or talent that you might actually be a healer of dark things. So to be a healer of dark things, you need to go through dark experiences and struggle with dark stuff until you become strong and you understand where your like boundaries are, where you stand with everything. So you know what 
you know, you know who you are, you know what the energy is, you know how to work with your own energy, you know how to navigate other energies, you know how to navigate dark spaces, you could do soul retrieval, stuff like this. So it's not necessarily a bad thing to see you in a hell space because it seems like you're learning really incredible things here and everything is guiding you to being your true self, like discovering what that is. So the human world's not very good at helping people discover their spiritual gifts. So you really have to figure it out for yourself, unfortunately. But this is what's coming to me. And your guides are guiding you. They're pure love, your pure love, okay? How does pure love communicate? Pure love isn't, it's not like, you could say that guy that would like the rape scene represents pure love. But you would say, no, that's that's taking advantage or that's uh, putting me in a bad situation. That's forcing me to say no and mean no or and, and I don't believe in myself. But it's like it always was pure love because pure love is helping you to grow into the pure love of yourself, right? And so anything that's even manipulated in and of itself is also a secret riddle to helping you translate the pure love of yourself, okay? So every single thing is guiding you. Every single thing is love. So to have more safety and security in that, just knowing that, okay? But you're doing a great job and you're on your way. Is there anything else we could share with you that would really help just like next level this? <sighs> It's all about heart overhead, okay? And if your ego is creating like a block and creating like excuses, you know, it's like, um, well, I went through that thing and it's just, I just don't know how to not, you know, I don't know how to open up again. So that's an ego, that's a fear-based thing. If you just get the thoughts out of the way and the logic behind the thoughts and then the fear of following through and what might happen, thoughts, that's all ego-based stuff, it's survival-based stuff, and you just get into your heart, Remember what love feels like. It's playful. It's childlike. It's, um, you know, it's, it's sweetness. It's kindness. It's, it's just like, it's goodness, you know. It's um, meaning well. I'm trying to do the right thing. It's, um, it's good vibes. And you know you carry that. You know there's wisdom in that. You know that love is here. And you already then have a connection with your guides in your own heart. Whether you can see their faces, know their names, etc., you have that in your own heart. You carry it with you, and you are already a part of it. And then in the external, interdimensionally, you'll have soulmates that try to reach you, and they come from high vibrational places, as we can see here. is really cool how that high vibrational soulmate is actually sending a denser part down to reach you in a very dense energy space where you're working through this sort of conflict within yourself. And it's all about communication, right? And, and believing that your communication is respected and is heard. Don't just close everything off, but you can say no and then stay open and just keep working through it, okay? So thank you so much for the experience. Really enjoyed helping you today. Um, thank you everybody for watching. Um, if any of you need some support, I'd be honored to help you in a session. You can book a session at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. All right, have a great day, everybody.